Aunt Ninny. I'm Nathan's aunt. I, I know a lot of these faces, and a lot of them I've seen before, but don't remember. And we would like to thank you all for joining us today to dedicate this memorial in Nathan's name. And it's right up here if you didn't get to see it. <laughs> Jeff and Adam are going to be recording our events today to send to Erica, and Calvin, and Annette since they couldn't be here. So, but first, Jeff is going to give us a little bit of information about a little bit of a few words about the school and why we're here today and the Nathan connection to the school. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Up. Um, it's a fitting place that uh, you have a stone here for Nathan. The school met a lot to do. It's a uh, uh, senior class chaplain uh, who received the Daniel Award, which was uh, for only one student at school gets that for, for year, and it's uh, for boldness and faith. He was also captain of the cross country team his senior year, and, and uh, he ran on that team uh, through junior high and into high school. Um, and uh, they went to state twice. They also won the um, the um, second largest cross country meet in the country in junior high, and then again in in high, in high school at the uh, Tippy Carnival match. Uh, so uh, he met a lot of friends here that uh, became a lifetime uh, friendship. Um, he also met his wife here. Um, his uh, his friends. Well, was something remarkable about Nathan. He 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 kept in touch with everybody, whether it was. Uh, calling them daily, or playing online video games with them, or going on uh, uh, bachelorette parties, or bachelorette—just <laughs> 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 got back to natural. That's a queen of bachelorette parties, <laughs> and uh, um, it was remarkable how he stayed in touch with them. He made an effort to call them, and so these are all people that uh, were graduates of TCS. In fact, when they got married, it was a TCS wedding, and, and it was like a class reunion. All the kids came. And it was it was incredible. I think that that's we all the adults just sat down and they just took over the um, uh, he, he started out his career in teaching because the teachers had poured so much into him. Uh, he wanted to give back. But then he realized, you know, as he learned more about teaching, that oh, well, this is not all that's cracked up for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> they have a child that's in. And uh, uh, so then he went into history, and he loved history and he loved politics. Uh, he, um, uh, he loved philosophy and theology, and uh, um, so uh, he went on to change his career into that. Uh, it's just, it's, he never forgot what this school meant to him. Oh, yeah, this is the one-year anniversary. He died on the 25th, which is this coming Thursday, and uh, we hope to have uh, you know, Erica and others that here in one year. We obviously he's buried in Florida outside of Orlando. So uh, the family and people up here doesn't really have it, couldn't all make it down. You know? So it's just, this, uh, and it was, it took Mary and I want to thank her and Holly for, for doing this film and, and organizing all this. So I uh, appreciate every train out. It's, it's a great way to remember the anniversary of the Um uh, Yeah, we'll miss them. Uh, grief is a price we pay for love. Um, working through Nathan's loss, I came across an analogy of uh, psychologists were about the story of Gulliver's Travel. The Lilliputians had him nailed down by all these strands to the beach and he couldn't get free. And the, the psychologist said that uh, these strands are, can be like the memories of Nathan, uh, prior experiences or the loss of hope, the things we wanted to do with him. And uh, each one of those have to be broken. It's painful the first time you have a memory, the second time not so bad. And, and you can, you can let it sit in your craw and, and drag you down, or you can uh, be thankful about that, having that experience with them. Uh, each time that we go, uh, we have to work through that process. Uh, it takes time to move through all the strands to begin to live again without the overwhelming grief. But then we realize that living with those memories is better than not having the memories at all. Uh, the Victorian poet, Alfred Lord Tennyson, he lost it close personal friend at 22, and it affected a lot of his poetry. And he wrote, it's better to have loved and lost than never to have uh, loved at all. And so there is a reward in, in loving, um, um, and it, but the great price is grief. But he also warned us that we have to let love, we, we, have to be, we have to be careful, we can't let love clasp grief, our grief, or both will be drowned. 
Um, and he warned us that Jimmy Sweet to be drunk with loss and to dance with death and to beat the ground. So we have to be aware not to be swallowed up in grief and to, to, to wallow in it. Through our lifetime, we must continue to break all those small strands that tie us down to a different point where we can move on and be happy, and be blessed by the memories of Nathan, or worse, uh, the alternative is to be swallowed up with our grief and be forever restrained by those strands, or worse, to forget Nathan in order to avoid the pain, mm -hmm. at which point you lose the reward of having known him. Bob and I are happy to talk about those memories and feelings with each of you and to change our strands to joy. It's important to grieve with those who grieve, but it's important to rejoice with those who rejoice. Bobby and I doubted we ever had children. In fact, we tried for seven years and to get pregnant, and we were kind of accepted the fact that we weren't going to be able to do that. We waited for adoption. Um, then we were blessed. So we, named, we named the first child Nathan David. Uh, blessed with Caitlin as well. Nathan David means beloved son, uh, gift of God. Mm -hmm. And um, today we couldn't imagine life without Nathan and Caitlin. And, uh, uh, and, and, you know, even if we just cherish the time we have with Nathan. Um, we intended to be adult friends. We intended to make them adult friends of ours. And, and they certainly were. Now, personally, my family, my relationship with Nathan was not one of the typical father son. We didn't throw football, we didn't play sports together, uh, we didn't watch sports together. I'm not a big sports, we didn't weight lift or see those things. But we did spend hours talking about history, politics, and theology. Spirituality was important to Nathan. He named his son Calvin Elliott. For those who don't know, John Calvin was a 14th century theologian. He, uh, he uh, believed that, we're, that mankind was totally deprived and that we could nothing was good in us. And, and, you know, we, uh, we can't save ourselves. And Jim Elliot, Elliot, the middle name, was the this, 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 uh, famous South American uh, missionary who, who um, was eulogized in the Tip of Spear movie. He, he died at a young age, but he opened up a uh, message of salvation to South America, uh, at least in that area. So those two people, so he incorporated his history, his politics, his theology, and his child's name before he died, ironically. Elliot's uh, philosophy was that a young life can make a difference, even, uh, even though you mm -hmm. got young, but still accomplish God's purpose, which is ironic because he was named before he died. A uh, recent antidote um, from a pastor, I, I heard it, first I heard that, was at uh, First Baptist, and it was a, about golf, and I said, well, the only thing I know about golf was Jim taught me. I played six times in my lifetime, and I'm a bad golfer since fall. Uh, but uh, I do know what scrambles is. And the analogy, do you remember the, the analogy of scramble? I, don't, I know what scramble is. I don't remember what he said. You take the best shot, right, Jim? Oh, so, okay. So, uh, oh, before you can be player, the, you take the best shot. Yeah. So if you can then be the, you move up. You can be the worst golfer there, right? And if you got the best on your team, you win, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So his analogy was that. Since we're all totally depraved, that's what Calvin said. <laughs> if you're on the team Jesus, he's, the, he's your scratch golfer. He's the best. And you're like, okay, you know, I'm on the team. I win. Uh, and so that was kind of, I thought, if, I wish I could tell Nathan this analogy because it's, it really is his philosophy. He had friends from all different uh, runs of life. He had, a, he had the Rainbow Coalition to the White Supremacist. I mean, he just, and he loved all people, and he just, you know, said, look, you just, you can, it doesn't matter where you come from, what you've done, or what you will do. Right? Christ is a, he's your scratch golfer. If you're on his team, you're going to make it. Um, let's see. So I'm sure Nathan would want me to share that story with you. And I think that's what the reason he, he, he liked the name Calvin. Calvin, by the way, Calvin Coolidge was named after him, the president. That's his history. And then, of course, Calvin, the character of Calvin, Calvin Hobbes, was also named that. <laughs> <laughs> so, because because Hobbes was a, like an atheist philosopher, and Calvin, of course, is not. So, 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 the, so the cartoonist actually visited a, a debate at a college, and he said, well, I'd, I'd like to see the, the mixture of the two. And so, at any rate, uh, Nathan would want you to know that uh, if you if you can you know, just think of a prayerful admission to God that you're totally afraid and that you request that he take uh, Jesus' death as your best golf shot, and uh, instead of your own attempt to, to live a good life, put yourself, and that puts you on that team. It's a simple prayer. Um, if you pray that for the first time, let somebody know that's, that you know uh, loves Jesus, is on, uh, on team Jesus, and let them know that you said that prayer, then they'll be glad for you and tell you how to get to know more about the golf pro. Uh, I will see Nathan again on the Nathan poll and celebrate our team's victory. In the meantime, We'll remember him with meetings like this and, and this, this marker right here. So, turn it back to you. Thank you, Jeff. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
I write big on small cards. He writes little on three pieces of paper. So really not going to be that long. When Nathan was a senior in high school, right here, and I would encourage you, you uh, spring or little Christian families, if you walk along, all these stones along here are from Nathan's era, and you're going to recognize names. But anyway, when he was a senior in high school, he was asked to pick a Bible verse that meant something to him that was going to be put in the yearbook. He picked Isaiah 6, 8. It reads, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom should I send, and whom will go with us, go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Holly and I decided to use a portion of this verse for our stone because we feel that it really tells us a lot about Nathan, and we have chosen to dedicate the stone in his memory. Some of us were here to watch Nathan grow from the always smiling little boy to the young man he became. Those joining his journey along the way that may not have known him when he was little will all agree that he was a pretty special person. He lived lovingly with faith and compassion. I'm sure Nathan wouldn't want us to continue to be sad, but instead to cherish his memory and all the times we spent together. Aside from the support of family and so many loved ones and friends, I think knowing that Nathan believed our life unfolds on a preordained pre dynasty, dynasty, destiny helped me the most. A quote shared at his funeral was by the philosopher Seneca. In part, it tells us, lift your finger and turn the page, <laughs> to prepare ourselves each day as if it's our last. Postpone nothing and be happy with our choices that we made that day. By doing this, each day is never short. And I watched Nathan all his life, and I feel that this was really what he was, what he did. Although taken from this world too soon, Nathan lived each day to its fullest. I have so many memories of walking in the park with him and watching him play with his cousins, of which a few of them are here, in our home, inside or out, no matter what the season. And that seems to be the, the memory I hear from all of his cousins. They, that's what they remember, being at our house and playing. I remember how Bobby showed me to gently stroke his forehead, calm him down, when he was a little anxious. But I tried that with Calvin, and I'll have you know, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> One memory that is only mine is an overnight that he and Caitlin spent at our home when Mom and Dad were gone. He, I, he was young. I, I couldn't even tell you how old he was then, but they were very young. I watched him tenderly help Caitlin get her jammies on and brush her teeth and floss her teeth. And, and knowing that he he would always be watching over his little mug. He watched over her then, and he's going to watch over forever. Nathan left us with the legacy of Calvin, and Eric is a, po a powerful protector of this legacy. Jeff gave us the meaning of Calvin's name, which helps a lot in knowing about him. And, and I, I'm hoping that Erica knows that we will always share in protecting this leg legacy. Okay, I told you I've gone on long enough. <laughs> so I would like to see if there's anybody else that would like to share a memory. Oh, come on, somebody. Kyle, you were in Scouts with him. What do you remember? <laughs> um, so Nathan and I did a lot of camping together um, mm -hmm. through Boy Scouts. I think the, I don't want to say scariest. But we, we went uh, packing, backpacking out east in the uh, Appalachian region. And uh, him and I and one other person that I can't remember end up running off bouldering uh, one afternoon. We, we were, everything was fine. The camp was all set up. I think uh, our parents were both sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, oh yeah, we're just gonna go have fun. And uh, so we were just running around, out in the middle of nowhere, climbing up and down rocks. Uh, I think I rolled my ankle at one point, uh, and we come back to uh, 
a couple different people uh, having some comments to say about that. Uh, you know, there's still another 12 miles to go. What are you guys doing? But I don't know. Uh, he was he was a great person to hang out with, to play and explore, and um, just his general optimism and life was. I, I do cherish. That. I remember watching you guys build build roller coasters, design roller coasters that you were going to build. Mm -hmm. And you always seem to have so much fun. How many times did you bury each other in the sand? <laughs> More than I can get. <laughs> and nobody died. <laughs> Lisa sent me a memory. Uh, Lisa, who is another cousin, who is Holly's daughter, sent me a memory of crashing into another car on the court just south of Seaclerk, just south of Central, while looking for the TCBY that was supposed to be there. She had us all in a tither, but nobody got hurt. Um, let's see. <laughs> Somebody must have something yeah, else. Plus, uh, so I'm, uh, Erica, Erica transferred in here to uh, Pluto Christian, like as a sophomore. And so that's when she met Nathan. I know Nathan was here for 12 years. So I. How many? 13. 13. So uh, So I knew Nathan after Jeff had had all his theological logical and political discussions with him. So I, I never knew him as as baby, right? So I, I knew him as uh, the one that liked to debate and liked to challenge and liked to be right about things. And uh, he was a character. And uh, I remember when the group of their friends would come over to our house and they'd play board games and things. And uh, it would be late at night and I'd be up in bed trying to get some sleep, um, and then Nathan would win the game. I knew that Nathan won the game because the whole house was safe. He <laughs> was very, uh, was very um, uh, uh, rambunctious in a sense, but very intelligent, but very mild and uh, mild-mannered. And uh, so he uh, uh, was a, um, a unique, unique individual, and uh, he was a blessing for our family. He was a light for our family. and. Uh, meant a lot to us. And, uh, he was a good, good husband and uh, um, father to uh, a, a great, uh, a great uh, babe. And uh, but he, uh, but he was uh, very um, intelligent, but very, um, as Jeff mentioned, uh, accepting, accepting and loving to whoever crossed his path, whoever came into his life, and he, uh, he cared for them. So. Uh, uh, he learned a lot. He learned a lot from him, and he's touched, uh, touched a lot of people, and he's touched a lot of people in a, in a great way. And uh, he lives through us because we've uh, we've seen uh, seen him and seen um, his characteristics and his uh, his love. And, uh, uh, it's, a, it's the love of Jesus in our lives. So I mean, uh, thank God for that. Yeah. Now, Adam was another cousin, but he was an older cousin, so he might have a little different perspective on, on Nathan and his antics. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I mean, I remember him most, not as, as a younger man, but as an older man, and Nathan was always very like, curious and, and learning stuff. And, and like you said, Bobby, he liked to challenge people and push people. And that's something we always had in common. Uh, and, and so I, I really connected with him on that level and being able to have conversations about this stuff. And one thing I really learned from Nathan was you can have meaningful conversations where you disagree with people and it doesn't have to be like acrimonious or you can. And, and it's, it's very persuasive and perspective. And that, I think that's what I remember most from just the curiosity and, and that personality of just being out there and, and, and talking to people and discourse. And I, that will always stick in my, in my mind is that I don't, re, I don't remember getting in trouble too much other than telling him about the time his, his father tried to kill us in his <laughs> sports car and hide from the cops and everything. And his eyes got really, really big. He, that was a different side of his father. He was always curious in those kind of stories too from before he was around. With, but I didn't have a lot. That's how I remember it. Well, thank you very much, Adam. Anybody else? Nate was a, a good friend of my son, Rob, and hung out a lot. Four of them had Steve and Nate and uh, Matt and uh, Rob and son. And Nate would come over off of his Rob and spend time with him. He came over one time to our house and we had this, uh, there was an old basketball hoop on the ground like that. Nate called in and 
I don't know why he pulled the way he did. He pulled in and he hit the basketball court. The basketball rim and it, it fell over. Or went backwards, like, you know, pulled it down. And he backed up and then he smashed it again. <laughs> <laughs> and then he panicked. He backed up and he just took off. And he, left, you know? and he calls Rob about what, five minutes later, like, this is. I hit your basketball. <laughs> Rob says, why'd you leave? <laughs> he just panicked and took off, you know. <laughs> we just laughed, you know, it's just funny, you know. <laughs> Nate was a really good, really good. We enjoyed Nate a lot. Now, I think I can honestly say, I'm not as, he's never as close to Nathan as all of you, or most of you, but he was always there. And he'll always be there. He lives right now. He always lived behind me in my office on the bookshelf. Now he's on the corner of my desk where I spend most of my waking time. Uh, people come into your life and they leave. Some you miss, some you don't. Nathan will never be missed. If we don't have any more comments, I'm going to turn this over to Bob, to close us. Did you want to say something? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm usually allowed now. We're going to turn this over to Bob to close our gathering today. Yeah, so uh, this is a very, uh, very nice uh, arrangement. Uh, uh, Jeff, thanks for the words. Those are uh, well put together. Uh, uh, I know you had a lot more notes you probably wanted to make but that's uh good but we uh, we come here and uh yeah nathan spent a lot of time here and, and did a lot and uh cross country and all that and uh, music you name it uh, just the really uh, uh the, the school shaped him right and uh parents shaped him and family shaped him and, but uh, he meant a lot to uh, so many of us uh, i was going to read a, a passage from uh, uh, psalm 100 uh, it's, it's basically a psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving, into the courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Come on, I had something about it. In kindergarten, we had to memorize it. Mm -hmm. All the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. All these. Um, oh, they had to memorize it. They had to memorize it. it. Yeah, well, it's a, they presented it. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's actually a very memorable, <laughs> memorizable right. song. Okay, it's a memorizable psalm. You could actually uh, dwell on that and, and memorize it. But it's it's a it's a tremendous um, psalm of both praise and thanksgiving. And uh, we thank God that we had the time we did with Nathan. Yes, it was not what we wanted, but um, but it was memorable. It was very memorable. And again, his legacy lives on. So I just want to. Uh, and with prayer, and again, thank you, Mary, for uh, bringing this all together. Heavenly Father, we come before you, and uh, again, as the one year of Nathan's passing from this world enters, uh, we this this time of grief comes back to us right now, and it's difficult. It's difficult, but your your words to us. Uh, mean so much to us lord we just thank you that we had the time to spend it with nathan to be with him to enjoy things with him to laugh with him to learn from him and lord we just thank you that uh, there's a presence in our lives still of nathan and we um uh, it's not that's not going to go away it's not going to go away yes we do miss him so much and for those that are, are still grieving, and the grief does go on, uh, we just pray for them that are here and others. Uh, but he did touch a lot of lives, and he had an impact in this world. And 
as uh, as that uh, Bible passage on this plaque here, uh, Lord, send me. Lord, we, uh, he obeyed. He listened. And Lord, he uh, learned your word. He followed your word. And Lord, he loved you. And uh, we, just, we just thank you for this time that we had with him and that we could share in his life and uh, how he's touched our lives. And, uh, may we be uh, uh, fellow disciples to... Uh, carry on his legacy and to uh, show this world the love that he exemplified to the people that he met. Lord, we need to be more like that. Lord, we thank you for his life uh, in this world, but Lord, we know that he's comforted with you right now and uh, celebrating. And Lord, we just thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Bonnie. And thank you all for coming today. We'd like to invite you over to Chef and Bobby's. We're going to have some pizza and continue talking and eat a lot of Nathan's favorite foods. Um, Bobby, I can give you Bobby's address and you can stick it in your GPS. I know we all know where it is, but we're getting there from here. It's a 7320 Red Maple in Holland. And are we going to run into that bridge construction we were talking about? Well, <laughs> There's signs yeah, to go around yeah. Okay. We have up here some of the flyers that Eric had printed from his funeral and then about Nathan. It's been about it's from them and Calvin. You're welcome to take one. Thank you all. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> 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 <